Well, this is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video from my parametric modeling class at Southern Maine Community College, and it's an, a, a video to show you how to use something called the contour method for creating parts, which is an alternative to the way that I demonstrated this part in class. So I have SolidWorks open here. The axle support is the part from the caster assignment. And what I'm going to do is start a new part file. Make sure that I'm using millimeters. So we'll look down at the units at the bottom. Currently set to IPS, which is inches, pounds, and seconds. I'm going to change that as soon as it opens up. I'm going to change that to millimeters, grams, and seconds. And I will draw this on the right side, the right plane. So I'm just going to select the right plane to draw it with. Um, because this is symmetrical, we're going to start again with a center line that goes right down through the axis of symmetry, not exactly an axis. And I'm going to start the print, uh, start the uh, sketch right at the origin like this. Come over to the side, come down, stop. I'm going to put a circle at the bottom. And I'll use a circle instead of an arc because it's just easier oftentimes to draw a circle and then trim it into an arc. Go back to the line command. When I do the line, I want to make sure that when I get up against this and get the glyph that's yellow, that I have both the coincident glyph and the tangent glyph. And if I move my mouse just to the right spot, it's actually a little bit of a range. Now when both of them are showing, the little yellow glyph that shows coincident and tangent, now I have a line that both touches that circle and is tangent to that circle. Now I'm going to mirror the things that I just drew except for the circle because the circle is already on the other side. The mirror about line is going to be the center line that I put down through. Come across to the other side. Now we'll go up and trim that out and this out. And we can start adding dimensions. But before I do that, ooh, actually, <laughs> I'm going to undo the trim. I just remembered what I'm doing is demonstrating the contour method. In the contour method, we're going to leave that whole circle in there. Now I'm going to put a line that goes across here. So what I'm doing is sketching all of the features in a single sketch, which I normally would not do. And I normally would not do that because I do the overall shape and then I would add these features later. But this contour method actually works pretty well. And what it does is it, it has all of the dimensions that you might want to change encased in one sketch. So that circle is going to be there to show that raised boss. I put another circle that's concentric. Looks like that. And that would be what we would look, you would look at as a drawing of the right side view on this part. Now, I'm going to add some dimensions. And you notice I just use mouse gestures to do that. I've got it set to 8. If I go straight up, I get the dimension tool. And I'll start adding dimensions. So when I add the dimensions from here to here, is going to be 82. And I'll make one other little change. I don't like the dimension style that's being used here, which is aligned, which means the dimensions tilt up to line up with. Yeah, this is an interesting little glitch in SolidWorks. I have this set to ANSI, which means I should get ANSI dimensioning, but I don't get it until I do this and then go back and change it again back to what it was already set for, which is ANSI. Now the other thing I'm going to do is modify the dimensions so there are no trailing zeros. And I'm doing that just because that's the standard for metric. It doesn't matter. All I'm doing here is putting in dimensions. So now I've got that. Well, the other thing is that should be above. That's, no, that should be in the line. So that's the ANSI standard right there. All right, now I'm dimensioning this. That's going to be 10. And you notice now the dimensions are horizontal, which is what we do in the United States. Distance from here to the center, coming down here is 48 and then that radius is 19 which means the diameter would be 38 so we'll put that in and then that diameter is 22 now that's a fully defined sketch <clears throat> a fully defined sketch that has all of the elements in it and I'm going to start with this now by extruding individually in pieces by using the same sketch for each piece. So the feature I'm going to start with is the overall shape right here. So that means I'm going to feature extrude 
the contours. And I need to go down to the selected contours window here and make it blue. Now I'm going to say I want to, and because of that center line, which we need, um, you have to pick things on either side of it. So I'm just going to say I want all of these things right here. Now those are the parts that I want coming out. The rest of this I'm going to do later on in a different feature. And I'm going to extrude those 10 millimeters. And that 10 millimeters is the thickness of the part, which is what I want. Now I'm left with this. But I can use that same sketch again by going back over directly to features and say extruded boss or base. But instead of selecting a plane to sketch on, since I already have a sketch, I'm just going to go into the inside and I just pick that little arrowhead to go in here. could also have picked that button right there <clears throat> because there are a number of things that can be displayed over here and one of them is the feature tree and one of them is properties and other elements of the, uh, of the part file. What I need to do is see two things at once and to do that I can either click that button or I can come over here and open it up inside. So that's the sketch I'm going to use. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this. Let me move that around so I can see it a little better. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to extrude that all the way out so that it comes surface parallel to this one. I'm going to show you. Think about that. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to extrude this. It has to start two millimeters in from here because the whole thing goes 12 millimeters. So I'm going to extrude it coming out, but I'm going to start not from the sketch plane, but I'm going to start offset from the sketch plane. I'm going to offset from the sketch plane two millimeters in the other direction. So you see what it's doing is it's going to start two millimeters out from there. Then I can indicate my extrusion is going to be 12 millimeters and it should come out even with this and it does. So now I've got that raised boss right here. Now the other thing I need to do is bring that shelf out. Once again, I'll go back to extruded boss and base, and then I'll pick an, ex an existing sketch, and the existing sketch will be the same sketch. This time under contours, I'm going to pick that and that. And what I want for this is to come out from that surface 38 millimeters. So I just make that 38. And now I'm back at the place where we would have been if we'd done each one of these things individually. So the point is you can do everything in one sketch as long as you use the contour method for extrusion because if I tried to extrude that original sketch all by itself, I would get an error message because it wasn't a single closed shape. After that, you do everything else the same way I did it on the first example that I showed you, which we'll, we'll go ahead and do that right now anyway. So let's, uh, let's start by putting in... I need to have those radiuses there, so let's put those radiuses in there. Those are fillets. Pick that one. Pick this one. It tells me that they are 12 millimeters as a radius. It comes around like that. Now we'll go ahead to hole wizard. I'll indicate I want to put a hole wizard hole here. Well, we can do the type first and then the positions of the positions and the type. So we'll do the type first. Come down here and we need to have a counterboard hole. I'm going to show custom settings, which by the way is not normally turned on. You have to select that in order to type in overrides. Otherwise, it asks you for the size of an existing fastener. And then it places the standard dimensions in. And these are not standard because the hole is 11 millimeters. The spot face is 20 millimeters. So we go over here for the hole, change that to 11. Come down here to the spot face, make that 20. And because it's a spot face, it just has to go deep enough to get under the surface. And the surface in this case is a cast iron surface, which is demonstrated with those tiny dots. It's called pocheting. And I'm just going to go down one and a half millimeters because that is just enough normally to get under the surface of that rough spot or the rough surface on a cast part. Now, down here, um, I'll just go up to next for the end condition, which is fine because it's going to go from here and then stop at the top. Now I go back up to the tabs and go to position. And now we're going to say, put this here. And I'm just going to position one of these. And then I'm going to put a dimension on it. The dimension I'm going to put be is from the center, from here to here. And that's 12. I'm going to put another one from here to here, also 12. Now you notice <clears throat> the fillet that I put in here 
is also 12 millimeters as a radius, which means the center of that fillet happens to be the same as the center of that hole. That would be very common. However, I independently dimension the hole. What I'm going to do is demonstrate the problem with using the center of that fillet as a location for that hole. I'm going to go back to the hole wizard and put a separate hole in there. And that separate hole is going to be the same one I just did, but when I do the positions this time, because I put it here, but put it at the center of that. So now you notice what I'm doing is snapping to the center of that fillet. Now you notice it looks exactly the same. So what's the problem with doing it that way? The problem with doing it that way is this hole is always going to be 12 millimeters over and 12 millimeters over. It's not going to change location. This is going to be centered on that fillet. If at some point, for some reason, I go back and I decide that fillet is only going to be 8 instead, not 80, 8, instead, the hole on the left stays put. The hole on the right moves. So this is another example of design intent. My intent is to have that hole at a specific location, not necessarily centered on the fillet. That happens to be the case here. But that would be a shortcut that wouldn't work for you if you were to do it. I'm just going to set this back to 12 so that now everything looks right. And then after this is the issue of putting the fillets in that are fairly complex. And if you recall from the other one, fillet size in this is going to be 2. If I pick that edge right there, it looks pretty good. If, however, then I pick this edge, I'm telling it to do something that it can't figure out because that corner is so sharp that it doesn't know how to do the transition. That doesn't mean you've got to start over again. It means try picking something else that will give it a path. In this case, if I pick that little edge right there, it'll put a fillet on that edge. Now it has a path. Once it has a path, it puts it all the way around where it's continuous. On the other side, same size fillet. We're going to put a fillet on this edge that comes down and on this edge that comes down. So you notice they're coming on both sides. Over here, do the same thing on that and on here. You notice I didn't pick this surface, and I didn't pick that surface because this top surface on this cast iron part is machined. That means that edge right there is going to be a nice sharp edge. What I can't do is put everything in one because if I pick this, once again, it's too complex a, a, a transition. So when I do it, well now, in the past, for early releases of SOLIDWORKS, that has never worked. So something got fixed or something got improved. So this is good because now I have everything in one feature, which is exactly what I want to do. One nice thing about teaching is that as I demonstrate these things, you know, the same thing semester to semester, I'm doing it with the newest version of the software. Once in a while I discover something. In this case, I discovered something I liked a lot. At no point in the past was I able to put all these fillets together. Everything over here could be one fillet, but that had to always be added as a separate fillet. And apparently they've improved the algorithm that determines filleting and made it possible to do that. That's the whole part.